Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you that you have prepared paths for us, journeys for us. We thank you that you are faithful to fulfill the path that you have set before us. May our eyes be open to see your hand at work about us, ears be open to hear your word. Most of all, let our hearts be open to receive and embrace it. Come, Holy Spirit, empower us and penetrate our hearts that we might hear your word. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. It is a gorgeous day outside. I think we should hold service outside, don't you? Yeah, we could probably do that at one time. Have you ever been on a journey? Or are you all stay at home, sit on the couch people? Come on. You ever been on a journey? Did you, did you know how it was going to end or what would happen on that journey? Everything about it. Nobody knows that, do they? We have intents. We go off. And we say, well, we're going to go here. We're going to go there. We start this journey. It may just be a day journey. It may be a week journey. It may be a long journey. But you have no idea how it's going to, you know, play out, do you? I mean, you could get a flat tire on the road. You could miss a connection on your flights. You could miss getting on the cruise line because you were too late. We have no idea how the journey, how the journey is going to play out. We only know what we're hoping for in the end, don't we? The promises of seeing islands, the promises of being with friends, the promises of whatever the journey takes you to. We always look forward to being on that journey. Today, I want to focus on our Old Testament because we're talking about Abram. Well, he hadn't become Abraham yet, so I'll go between Abram and Abraham. And, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, we'll, we'll try to be as consistent as possible. But I want you to think about Abraham. Because God had told him and said, Abram, I want you to get out of Dodge. Well, actually it was Ur of the Chaldeans. We read that in, you know, in our Old Testament reading. And what he did was he promised him a whole bunch of things. It, the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. You see, he called Abram. He says, are you ready for a journey? I'm going to take you on a journey. Now, for Abram and his family, that meant giving up everything. Because, see, family helped family. Family was there to support each other. They worshiped the different gods. And all of a sudden, Abram becomes a monotheistic person. He believes in the one true and living God, the God that created the heavens and the earth. And God spoke to him and said, come on, guy. I'm going to take you out of the Ur of the Chaldeans and I'm going to place you in this land. And it was a land that he promised to Abram. It was going to be his land. And he says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Do you see that? All the peoples on the earth are going to be blessed through you. Now, Think about that. Abram's given everything up on a promise that God is going to take him into the land, that he is going to bless him. And what did Abram do? So Abram went, as the Lord had told him. It wasn't a question of, I'm not going to do this. Hey, that sounds like a great trip. It sounds like a good thing. But I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to trust you. That everything that you've said is true. I'm going to put you on this path. Abram goes and he gets into the land. And something happens. You see, Abram is childless. And in those days, those who... The heirs were their children. So they would inherit what was left to them. They would inherit the land. They would be the ones who would receive the blessing after their parents were gone. It was that kind of situation. And what is happening? Abram doesn't have anything. 
He doesn't. He's going to have the land. Well, he's promised the land. But where's his heirs? He doesn't have any. He has nothing to hand them down except for his servant, Eleazar. And he's not blood kin, if, as we would call it. And that's where our readings pick up again today. And it said, The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. This is like God speaking to the prophets that would come later, like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Amos and Obadiah. And I could go on, but I won't. But the word of the Lord came to him. In other words, God is speaking to him in a vision. And he's saying, Abram... Do not be afraid, because by this time, Abram's on a journey. He's missed the connection. No, not really, but he's on a journey, and he wonders what is going to happen. God, you promised me this. I don't have an heir. What's going to happen? And what does he say? Do not be afraid. Fear not. Because God makes him two other promises right here. He says, I am going to be your shield. In other words, I am going to protect you through this. If we'd read just a little bit earlier, he'd been down to Egypt and he was afraid because the king, he was afraid he was going to get killed because his wife Sarai was so beautiful and thought the king down there was going to kill him so he could have Sarai. But God says, I am your shield. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make sure things happen. I'm going to make sure that this is fulfilled. Just listen. Your reward shall be great. Now I'm saying, how can my reward be great? I don't have an heir. I'm childless. But God does something, and he promises him that he will. It won't be Elzear. It will be his own flesh and blood. But Abram does something else. He says, O oh Lord, how am I to know that I shall possess it? How am I to know? And I think that's what we face every day. I don't think Abram had doubt. It's not doubting whether God's going to fulfill it, but he says, how am I going to know? He wanted assurances. How many of y'all like assurances? You want, you know, it's like, I can assure you that if you do this, it's going to happen. Sometimes in the back of your head, doesn't it ring out, that's too good to be true. We hear that, ah, oh, that's too good to be true. But I assure you it's going to happen. That's too good to be true. But this is what God is saying. He's giving Abram an assurance. He's going to tell him, he's making a covenant with Abram. Now, I like assurances just the same way you do. When we left Orlando to go to seminary, I had no assurances at all that I would even make it through. I have beautiful editors for the newsletter. I am so thankful for them. But you see, my typing skills are, I type back here, but my mind's up here, and somewhere in the gap, the words get missing. So I'm thinking, I've got to write 10 and 20 page papers, and I'm back here like this, and my editor say, you wrote what? Didn't you mean to? I have all a lot of my papers, and they're all marked up, and it's like, okay. But there's an assurance that I had to trust God that he had brought us to go to seminary. I'm not a speed reader. I didn't go to Evelyn Wood's school of speed reading. I know people that can sit there, and my daughter and my son, they'll read books, and it's like they're on page 100, and I'm on page 5. I'm just one of those slow readers. I just tell everybody I like to absorb every word. So I'm sitting there thinking, I've got to read 6,000 pages in a term. How am I going to do this? I mean, that's the things, and, and I'm out there, and God said, go, go, go. And then you get through, and you get your MDiv, and you're saying, but God, where's, where am I going to serve? 
I, mean, I didn't have a position when I left seminary or when I finished. I didn't have a position. But God had started me on a journey. And he had promised in a way that, you know, you're here to serve me. This is what I've called you to. You need to be faithful to it. Abram's in the same boat. And each one of us have probably had a similar situation, haven't we? Been on a journey? How's it going to end? What are the things that happen in between? We can see some of those stumbling blocks along the way. But God has a purpose. And he will fulfill it. Ended up in exile in the Diocese of West Texas. No, I'm kidding. I told God, if you take us out of West Texas, you've got to put us in paradise, because it was paradise there in the hill country. And he brought us here. But you see, it's the journey. And what he did was he made a covenant with Abram to show that his word is faithful. He said, take a heifer that's three years old. Take a goat that's... And he told him exactly how to do it. And then in the night, when it was really kind of terrifying, God shows up. Sometimes I think we get terrified on our journeys, don't we? Is this really going to happen? How are we going to do this? How are we going to get through it? God delivered. God provided. You see, when we look at it that way, we can say that God is taking us on a journey, but Abram had to be faithful. And in that faithfulness, God counted him as righteous. In other words, he could have said, uh-uh, I'm done. I'm going back home to Mama. I'm going back home to Daddy. I'm going to go back home to my kid. But he understood that God had a purpose for him. He understood that God was going to carry him through. And God counted him righteous for his faithfulness. One of the writers wrote this. Righteousness throughout Scripture signifies the fulfillment of the demands of a relationship. You see, Abram had to trust. Abram had to have faith. He had to trust God for everything. And, the, and basic to that righteousness is, listen to this please with your heart. Our relationship with God is trust in the plan and working of the Lord. Abram trusted God and his promises. Now if we continue to read, we find out that he wasn't going to actually get the land. His heirs were going to get the land. It was going to be after 400 years of being in slavery to Egypt. But they would walk out with a lot of gold and riches and things like that. When Moses took them across the Red Sea, they had riches with them. Because they had been faithful at the Passover time. They had been faithful to worship the Lord. And God delivered them. We have a journey. We have a journey with Christ. And sometimes we feel like it's that darkness. It's the darkness of the soul that Abram must have felt when it was dark that night. But God provided. He was there. I am your shield. And he will always be our shield. You see, God's plan will always be fulfilled. God's plan will always be be carried through. Nothing can stop it. The Pharisees were telling Jesus, don't come, you got to get out of here because Herod of Antipas was the ruler up in Galilee. He had just killed John the Baptist. He was worried about Jesus being the incarnate or whatever of John the Baptist, which he wasn't. And maybe the Pharisees were trying to scare Jesus so he would quit doing all the miracles and the signs and wonders and telling everybody about how God is going to redeem them. Not like Moses did, but redeem us and reconcile us and to him that our sins would be forgiven. Maybe they wanted him to go to Jerusalem so that they could keep an eye on him and plot against him. We don't know. But what does Jesus do? 
Jesus stays to his course. When he was rejected by the Samaritans, he still had his face set like flint to go to Jerusalem. There is a plan. And the plan would be fulfilled. They would come for us, he would die for us, he would redeem us. You see, this is what we face each and every day. It's what you and I face every single day. It's a journey. A journey that God will fulfill. If we listen with our hearts, and we embrace in our hearts, Lent is a time in which we reflect. Lent is a time in which we should be building and deepening our relationship with God. We should be building and deepening and saying, Lord, how can I be closer to you? We should be like Abram. What can you do for me, Lord? Or what are you going to do for me? It's not like teenagers like, you want me to do that? What's in it for me? You know, have you ever heard somebody say that? Ask somebody, and it's like, what's in it for me? That's not what Abram says. He says, you promised this reward, how is it? We should look to God that way. We should look through Jesus that way and say, I want to get closer to you and deeper in a relationship with you. We may not see the end. The Pharisees and the people wouldn't see the end. He says, but you will know when you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And when Jesus comes in on Palm Sunday, that's what they're saying. You see, things are going to be fulfilled, and God will fulfill them if we stay with his plan and follow his plan and trust in him. And trust in him. Not about us, but about him and listening to his word. As we walk through this journey of Lent, let that be part of what you're looking for. Lord, you have a plan. I don't know what it is. You've set me on a path. You've shown me some things along the way. I don't know everything that's going to happen along the way, but I trust and I have faith in you. And deepening that relationship with Him. Trusting in Him to fulfill what he's promised. How many of you are on a journey? How many can you re of you can remember a journey? We don't know the end. But let us trust. Let us have faith that God's word is true. If you've never put yourself in that position of trusting God in that way, Will you do that today? Will you open your hearts and ask him, what is it you have for me? What journey is it that you have for me? Not about what's in it for me, but how can I be in a journey for you to fulfill what you've purposed? Amen. A journey. Life is a journey. You can't avoid it. But there's a great journey, the greatest journey you can have, is a journey that God has prepared for you. There will be times like Abram, where you say, okay, Lord, where are we going? And that's okay. Because as long as you're on his journey, he's going to show you the direction in which to go. Jesus came for us he had a journey, and he fulfilled it in the time that God had said. In the fullness of time, God sent his son at that time. And he fulfilled that journey to the cross so that we could be redeemed and reconciled to him. The journey is yours to go on. The journey is yours to partake. The journey is yours to reject. If it sounds too good to be true, it's not. Jesus is the answer for you. Take that journey, let his Holy Spirit work within you, and let God be your shield so your reward may be great. I will leave you 
with us. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our souls. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our going forth song today is, Would You Be...